the thing is that when you raise, when you bring a higher frequency into a lower frequency, the lower frequency has to start vibrating higher to meet it, to entrain with it. And that means all of our stuff is going to come up. And all of the stuff, the darkness, the pain, the trauma that was held in the earth, all those memories that have been stored in the earth, they're coming up. So that's why we're seeing <laughs> so much chaos right now is because it's getting stirred up and it's coming out for release. And so that helps me to understand what my guides were saying so many years ago, that there would become a time when people would want to clear that old stuff out and have a, an easy and graceful way to do it. On the beautiful side of grief, we are all about grief. And when grief hits unexpectedly and profoundly, it can take you on an incredible journey in the quest to get answers and understanding. Suddenly, you can find yourself rejecting all that you know and are familiar with and delving into spiritual realms. That's what happened to me anyway. I've always been moderately spiritual, though since the death of my daughter Tal, a whole new world of ascension and quantum physics opened up to me. It was like there was this magnetic pull that I just couldn't ignore. And I suspect I'm not the only person this has happened to. So I have a guest today, Susanna Kennedy, who is considered a renowned leader in this field. She is an author and has been an Ascension coach for 20 plus years. And she's going to help us understand what Ascension is all about, how that ties into grief, like getting rid of all that unwanted baggage that just seems to be magnified at a time like this. And we're also going to discuss her book, Sacred Union, Ascending to a 5D Paradise. So I don't know about you, but I'm excited. So let me introduce you to Susanna Kennedy. Susanna, wonderful to have you chatting with us today. Yes, thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to be here. Yes, so this is a subject that just absolutely fascinates me. But to kick it off, I'd love to ask you, what's your favorite thing about living in Hawaii? Because that's just yeah. one of my go-to places. Yeah. I live on the island of Kauai. Mm -hmm. And what is so incredible to me is the amount of green. There are so many different shades of green and textures of green and shapes of green. It, it's amazing to me. So I love the color here and, of course, the weather. And, and the people are a bit more chill. <laughs> that tends to be the case in island life, doesn't it? Yeah, they just seem to be just a little bit more relaxed. And I understand what you say about all the greenery because that's my favorite place to be is just surrounded by all greenery, trees, shrubs, bushes. Yeah, my paradise. <laughs> all right, I'd love to know now, what led you into doing this work? Was there something profound that happened to you that pushed that button? Uh, because it probably wasn't very mainstream when you got into it uh, just over 20 years ago. I had been in the corporate world. I designed training programs in the Detroit, Michigan area. So our clients were the auto company, and I designed training. And so I, I was doing very well. It was a, a man's world <laughs> that was, yeah. I was in. And I was still doing really well. And but I just kept saying, is this really why I was put on earth? I just felt like I'm not living my purpose. I'm not feeling satisfied, even though I've got all this success. And, you know, what is that going on that I can't feel really great about this? And so I was asking. What was my sole purpose? And then one Saturday morning, I woke up with this energy just pulsing up my spine. It was fiery. It was intense. My spine was like jelly going up and down. And I like, oh my God, what's happening to me? And I heard a voice inside my head that since you're giving birth to yourself, just breathe. 
So totally random. Totally random. Yeah, totally random. So I did the Lamaze breath because that was the only breath I knew. And I had two children. And it lasted for about an hour and a half. And when it was done, I was a completely different person. And I was tapped in or connected or enveloped in this huge, vast presence, this feeling of the vastness of love that I am and that everybody is, <laughs> you know, and then I'm looking at what seemed to look like to me was a computer program that was my old self-identity. So to me, it looked like a computer problem, probably because I was teaching computers at the time, but it's like, it's just a collection of beliefs and patterns and programs and habits. And it's not who I really am. And I had no emotional connection to it at all anymore. It was just, but I could see that it was still there. And I could see that it was like in my cells. And I knew that if I didn't get rid of that, <clears throat> I wasn't going to be able to be who I really am. And when that came in, it also came in with a really strong sense of purpose and mission. I'm, whoever came in and birthed into my body is here on a mission from God and going to figure out what that is. And so that was, the voice stayed with me to guide me. And that was really very helpful. And then the task was to integrate that and get rid yes. of those computer programs. <laughs> I was led to a man that was having a workshop that had found a way to do this. And so I took the workshop and it worked. And I got free of all the old ego personality stuff it changed changed me changed my personality it changed my values it changed what was important and but in a good way and i felt i was like oh i love this new me so i took the course and it was so successful i was so impressed that i trained with him to be able to do it and then you know it took a year to gracefully disentangle myself from the old life. And I moved to Sedona, <clears throat> Arizona, mm -hmm. and I started practicing this. You know, I was certified and practiced it. But the guidance would come in and they would have me try different things and do it a different way. And then what they finally told me is that there's going to come a time on this planet where. Everyone is going to want to do this. It's going to be necessary for everyone to do this. And you're not going to be able to do these one-on-one -on -one sessions. It has to be graceful enough that they could do it themselves or that you could do it with a big group of people all at once. And so they gave me the instructions to make it more graceful. And so I created a, it's called it's now called the Emotional Mental Deep Programming System. And it takes people through clearing out all of their limiting beliefs and programs and all that stuff that created our self-identity in the first seven years. And it's over six weeks, so it's not like what happened to me in a flash. Because, <laughs> you know, a lot of people have had that experience. They, the Hindus call it a spontaneous kundalini yeah. awakening. But I think just about everyone else that I know that went through that ended up in a mental institution for at least a short time because it's like, your whole, it's like a psychotic break. You, your whole identity is there anymore. <laughs> yeah. And it's not like you have amnesia. You don't forget. You just, you're not emotionally attached to it. That is a huge way to be introduced to it, just completely out of the blue like that. And you've managed it so incredibly well. How did people around you cope with this new you? It was a big adjustment and it wasn't, 
It wasn't easy for other people. Mm. It was, I think it was easier for me. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had now all of this support. I had my guidance. I had high frequency. I, it opened up intuitive gifts and, and metaphysical gifts. So I was having a good time <laughs> playing with all of that. But yeah, it was an adjustment. And the people who, when you do that, you get a, a much higher vibration. And the law of attraction is always in operation. Mm -hmm. So it took me out of the attraction field of a lot of people. Yeah, I can imagine that would be here. I've had nothing compared to that. And I just know even as I've evolved and changed, you drop people off, but you gain others. You gain other beautiful oh, yes. souls, which is incredible. But yeah, other people go by the wayside. So what does it mean to be a divine being in a human body, Suzanne? It's what we all are. Yeah. <laughs> we are all that. It's the spirit coming into matter and heaven on earth. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> so, um, but it letting go of the 3D programming is how you do it. So that's and everything we know, the 3D programming. So that's everything that we've been exposed to prior to having awareness of this. Is that what you're meaning by that? Well, in, I don't know if you've heard of Bruce Lipton, mm. but he talks about this a lot. And actually, most of my clients have come from him. But it's in the first seven years, we're taking in everything where it's like the right hemisphere of our brains are very active. And it's just everything is going in unfiltered. And so all of what we're, all of our relationship patterns and programs get formed. All of the way that we believe about what we believe about ourselves. Are we lovable? Are we worthy? Are we too much of this or not enough of that? all of those things that's all happening in the first seven years. And then when your the left hemisphere of your brain becomes more active and that happens around the seventh year, all of that gets locked into the subconscious. And so um, along with that, because you're absorbing everything, you know, it's your parents' belief and society's belief and how your parents pass on the norms of society <clears throat> when they're wanting to socialize you so that you fit in the world. Or and don't so, fit in. <laughs> right. And, exactly. And that is, it's all the 3D programming, which what I mean by that is for recorded history, we've been in a third dimensional reality with this overlay that is called the illusion of separation. So because when we come in, when we incarnate, we're this big, divine, vast being of love coming into this little body, and we forget who we are. Yeah. And we feel separate and alone. And, and then we, have, we depend on our parents for our survival. And so... We have to adopt all of that. But the illusion of separation is significant and it permeates our whole culture. Yeah. And it's a third dimensional construct overlay. It's false. You know, we're not separate, but we believe we're separate. We see space between my body and your body and we think we're separate, but we're all connected. We're waves of energy. That's what we are. We're waves of energy. We're not even solid. And we're waves of energy in an ocean of energy. And everyone is in that ocean. And we're all connected. That's such a great way of explaining it. It's a bit of a tricky concept to get your head around if you haven't been exposed to that before, isn't it? Because just to... I mean, it's going against everything somebody may believe. Here I am thinking on one thing, this person and this body doing these things, and then suddenly you're saying, there's a bit more to it than that. You're actually connected to everybody else. And so what that means is that everything we do has an effect on somebody else or everyone else, doesn't it? Yeah, 
Yeah, there's that ripple effect. Yeah. And, and yep. yeah, so we all, that's why the spiritual teachers say, love your neighbor as yourself, because <laughs> you're connected and what you do, um, you know, it will reflect back on you. And we're this beam of light, we're a fractal of God. And we were given this individualized consciousness so that we could individually create and experience our creations. Why? What? Why did we need to do that? Uh, I think God needed to do that. <laughs> you know, when you're in that source consciousness, it's, it's all and everything and nothing all at once. And I know that's another thing that's hard to get your head around until you've experienced it. But I had a, I got to experience that. And what I experienced was, I, I have to say that the day before I had made a commitment that I was going to dedicate my life to the divine feminine. So I'd done that the day before. Mm -hmm. I did a little ceremony and, you know, very serious about this. And then the next day when I was meditating, this thing happened where I felt pulled out of my body and yet I could feel my body. So it wasn't, I could feel my body, both. It was like bilocating. I went through the void into nothing. Wow. Which is source. And then I emerged. And the first thing that you think when you come out, now you have an individualized consciousness that can think, that can create, that can experience. The first thing is, I am. I wasn't, and now I am. <laughs> wow. And then I felt or I sensed. Uh, a wave. And I'm, so I go to look, what is that? Oh, that's me. Waving, energy waving. And then I was looking at myself and it felt, it started to feel inside of my body as this, this energy coming into my womb area. And it was so strong. And I and it was like coming in, coming in, filling up. I felt like I was nine, ten months pregnant, and I was gonna, you know, split. Mm -hmm. And then all of these like stars and planets, all of these things started coming through me, and and then it, and it was like a wave. So it would get really strong. I would fill up. And then I would let it go and strong. And it just went on. I felt like it went on forever. <laughs> and was that the exhausted. divine feminine coming into you? That, yeah. I think what I, you know, what I was gifted with was the memory of, of creation. Wow. So is that similar to what people experience when they have near death experiences? That's I've never heard I've never heard anyone else describe. Wow. That's pretty exciting. That's pretty special. I can't even begin to imagine what that must feel like. Yeah. Yeah. And it got to be so much. It was like exhausting. I was trying to like just give me a moment to breathe. <laughs> just, you know, and I'm like trying to get away somehow and I would move and then this space would open up and Oh, there goes the next universe goes into that space. So, and then when it finally, I was exhausted and it finally calmed down. And I totally get <laughs> what they say in the Bible. And on the last day, they rested. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, can you just clarify for me? So, were you looking down on your what we would consider your earthly body or your earthly form, but actually, I don't even know how to describe what you were. I, I was in it, and I was out there at the same time, so it wasn't a looking down. No. Oh. It was, yeah. 
I don't know. I think they would call it bilocating. Oh, that's an exciting life you're having there. <laughs> so earlier you mentioned about us needing to all, you know, come to this awareness. What percentage of the population do you think are at this time having that awareness and understanding that there is something more than our 3D selves? I think that, I don't know that I know a mm. percentage, mm. but I think it's growing exponentially. Yeah. I think because so much of the world doesn't make sense, it's like there's got to be another reason. There's got to be something else, mm. you know. When things are confusing and they don't make sense, you just like there's something else I'm missing, or they haven't told me, or they're hiding, or and then also people are having mm. spiritual, you know, peak experiences. So more people are meditating, more people are doing yoga, more people are doing ayahuasca, you know, all of these different ways that they're trying to connect. And it's growing really fast. And it's the time. It's the cycle of time that we're in that this would happen now. So what do we need to be moving to? We're moving to a higher dimension of consciousness. And I just got the news, for, I do automatic writing, that the earth herself has been freed of all of the external bonds and all this technology and all these things that were done to, to keep her locked in 3D. And so she's been set free, and now she's moving very fast, higher and higher vibrations. And since we're on the surface of this planet, it's going to cause us to, to raise higher and higher. The thing is that when you raise, when you bring a higher frequency into a lower frequency, the lower frequency has to start vibrating higher to meet it, to entrain with it. And that means all of our stuff is going to come up. And all of the stuff, the darkness, the pain, the trauma that was held in the earth, all those memories that have been stored in the earth, they're coming up. So that's why we're seeing <laughs> so much chaos right now is because it's getting stirred up and it's coming out for release. And so that helps me to understand what my guides were saying so many years ago, that there would become a time when people would want to clear that old stuff out and have a, an easy and graceful way to do it. Yes, and I think... That's what happens to us when we have these major events like a, and I call them profound grief experiences because they literally stop you in your tracks and they change everything about life as you knew it. Like I know for me personally, I just let go of everything. I was a bit of a perfectionist. I worried about everything. I had so many emotions just running through my head constantly in that and then I came into this point where I just thought, you know what? I don't care anymore. I really, and for me, I was just sick of being on this treadmill. And I think there are so many people that just get cracked open like that. And then this is why we're getting drawn to these spiritual experiences, isn't it? Because right. it's guiding us to this new awareness and understanding and up-leveling of our energy. So... What do we need to be doing to level up? Because you talked about it being a higher frequency, and I think that we have to do our part to actually rise up to it, don't we? That's where my emotional mental deprogramming uh, system could be very helpful because it takes you through doing it step by step in a real guided way, a gentle way. And you know, the other alternative is that the stuff is going to come up and it's going to manifest in your life as a drama so that you have to face it head on. I can so, <laughs> Right. Yeah. So instead, you can take 
you know, I've identified six core issues that all humans have in common. And one by one, one week at a time, we take one and we clear all the misinformation, all the all the programming, the 3D programming, all the false beliefs that we have about ourselves, which is huge. Yeah. Because it runs our relationships. And all of those beliefs throughout our life have created events. And some of those events were painful and traumatic. And so that's why it's emotional and mental mm. together, because we can take those memories and turn those traumas, those pa emotional pains into love. And when you do that, you break the, the bond of the belief that created it. And you, you let go of that. And then you're open to, you know, I am a divine human. <laughs> I am a divine being of love and light. And I, I don't have to be small anymore. I don't have to, like, you lose the fear of abandonment. That's a big one. Yeah. And you know that you're most of the time the fear of abandonment, fearing it from others, we create strategies that where we actually abandon ourselves. Can you explain that so, a little bit more? Yeah. Okay. So say that you're a person like you've turned into a real people pleaser. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're you're doing things for people. At the bottom of it is so they'll like you, so they'll, so they won't abandon you. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what it's, it's at the bottom of it. And so, in doing these things for people all the time, you're, you may be abandoning yourself. And in terms of saying yes when you really want to say no, and then you resent oh. <laughs> that person or you resent that you had to do that. So, you're abandoning yourself in order to not be abandoned by them. Gosh, that was a cycle I lived for so long. And the hardest thing for me to do was to actually say no to somebody. I actually say, that doesn't suit me, because I used to just sacrifice myself all of the time and had major resentment. Because I go, mm -hmm. oh, why do they keep asking me? And why do I keep saying yes? And Yes. So, yeah. Oh, this sounds really beautiful, what we're heading toward. So what if we are not allowing ourselves to move into that space? So we're continuing to hold on to that energy, those emotions, and we let it uh, manifest as rage and anger and all of those things. Does that mean that we're not going to be a part of the new day? New Earth that we're moving toward, or new. I think everyone's going to get to a breaking point. Okay, it'll be forced upon them. That's how no it all choice. works. So if you you can get a little tap on the shoulder and say, "Okay, I'm paying attention," <laughs> or you get the hammer over the head. So I think, you know, the more you resist, the more painful it's going to be. And why resist when there's a really graceful way to move through it in six weeks. <laughs> and I think people don't even understand what they're going to move in toward because I know for myself, I was introduced to energy healing. And so what that opened me up to was like releasing a lot of those emotions that I'd suppressed within. And I just built up a lot of disease within me. So what happened was that for the first time in my life, I felt a calmness, a peacefulness. I felt strong. I felt, oh, just amazing, incredible. And I still have that calmness most of the time. I'm, I'm not perfect, but most of the time, you know, I just look at my whole entire life differently. It's, ah, oh, you know, that's small in the scheme of things. I'm not going to worry about that. Or I don't own that. Somebody else owns that. So let's not worry about it. So those are the types of things that we're moving toward. And I've heard your methods described, and you've just alluded to that as very simple, very easy, very powerful, 
And the beauty of it is that you're not having to relive or retell your story over and over again. So share with us how that all works with what you're doing. Remember when I said my guides say we want you to make this graceful Mm. is something that's called the triple flame activation. And that is a free gift that's on my website. And, and, you know, if you, if you've got people here who are grieving and all of that or depressed, it, it will work right away to, to lift you up and bring you into a sense of peace. But what the way that I've used it, because it's divine light, divine love, and divine creative power, those frequencies in a synergistic blend that are very powerful. And I, in a guided meditation style, I have you <clears throat> activate that triple flame in your heart and then move it through your body, you move it through your chakra systems, and then through the meridian pathways. So those are the energy pathways where your life force energy goes to your organs and your systems. And so we move it through and we clear all of those pathways. So then when we go to do the detox, the deep programming session, and we call things up from wherever they're hidden and suppressed, it moves through that meridian pathways. And because they're now all clear, it just moves through real fast Beautiful. and real easily. And so it doesn't get stuck. And that that's what made it so much more graceful than the way I actually learned to do it originally, because they were um, doing a breathing method. And when, when it would, the breath, the energy coming through the breath would hit uh, a block, mm-hmm. and that block was caused by a trauma. And so it would release that, and the person would re experience it. Or, the, you know, and I mean, it was just all so very cathartic and dramatic to support somebody through a session. And then also, you never knew what was going to come up. And you didn't know how many sessions you were going to need when you're mm. paying a practitioner this whole time. But, and it's like, when does this end? So creating a systematic approach where we're setting the intention So the other didn't have an intention. We set an intention. This is what we're going to release today. And this is what we're going to replace it with today. And then you have time to integrate that and those changes uh, for a week or so until the next one. And then you work on the next core issue. And you can do this over about six weeks, did I hear you mention? Yeah, I have. I offer this in two formats now. For a long time, for like 20 years now, it's been in a digital format where it's in a series of guided meditations. It's a digital program on the internet. You download it, you do it yourself. Okay. And then, uh, and it works and it takes you from a 3D consciousness to a fifth dimensional consciousness, which is what you just described. Go into that calm, peaceful, strong. Yeah. Yeah. And and then but w- what I was guided to do more recently, like August 8th, <laughs> was um, to upgrade it and to, to take it to the next level. Because when I created it 20 years ago, I was in a fifth dimensional consciousness. Now I'm bringing through eighth dimensional frequencies. And so those are getting infused. And... I'm also doing it live. So I'm taking people, a group through and and a small group so that I can coach everybody. Everybody gets individual attention. And so what I'm, what I can do, one of my gifts is be able to feel into the whole frequency of the group. And then I guess you could say I channel them. Mm. (laughs) So I, I give the the commands of what we're working on and they're articulated through me in a way that makes sense to the people who are there in a way that's addressing the individual challenges of the people who are there and then you know we 
we clear the old and then bring in the new. So the first session is about men, male energy, the masculine, the mind. And we always do that first because it's the mind that kind of controls everything else. That monkey brain. (laughs) Right, right. And so we clear that and get it back to it to be an equal partner with the heart and the soul so that what we do to replace the old stuff that's left is bring in like the inner divine masculine who's going to be making a space to protect the inner divine family that is that we're getting upgraded to oh my goodness oh this is so fascinating so a couple of things i want to just examine a little bit more so if somebody has their monkey brain on high alert like they've got this constant chatter can they still do that triple flame activation effectively or do they have to quieten their mind it's what i find is that people who have that kind of really act uh, overactive mind mm-hmm. sometimes they need to do it more than once because the first time the mind wants to know what are you doing is this is this okay is this going to hurt me you know so you listen to it with that in mind so is it, is it talking about our ego, our ego, which we want to protect ourselves, and that's what we've right. known. So is that what's coming into play there? Yeah, that that's it is. It's the ego uses the mind as a microphone. Mm-hmm. And the ego does. It feels it's its job to protect that self-identity that was created in the first seven years. It sees that as the job. And so when something comes to threaten that, so change, even good change, is a threat. And so it tries to sabotage it in any way it can. And that's that's why a lot of people don't like engage in like a transformational program is because that ego is saying, oh, no, (laughs) I got to keep you the same. It makes excuses or it even can create, you know, obstacles. Yeah. So, but what I find is if they listen to it once and the ego is satisfied that it's not going to hurt, then it relaxes the next time. And now, when I do my live sessions, I always give the command right in the beginning for the mind must be, you know, stand back, be the silent observer. It's your job to observe and to record what we're doing so that when we're done, when we've anchored this new reality, you are going to serve that new reality. Oh, that's a beautiful intention. And it seems to work really well. Yeah, because it's acknowledging it, isn't it? It's not going against it. It's actually making that a part of the process. The other thing that you mentioned is that you were in fifth dimension and now you're in eighth. (laughs) Well, I'm... I'm bringing through frequencies from the eighth dimension. My physical body is not in the eighth dimension. Okay. So can you just explain very briefly what these dimensions are? So if we're in the third, are we in the third? That's what the 3D is? Is I think everyone right now is in the fourth. In the fourth? And sometimes in the fifth. Okay. Yeah, I think 3D is gone. And so when you're going up, into those higher frequencies again, that's when you're getting the channeling, that's when you're getting the other like downloads as it may be. Am I on the right path there or? Yeah, you are. I, the way I try to visualize it so my mind <laughs> can wrap yeah. around it is you're in your physical body and your consciousness projects itself onto the screen which is what we call our reality. Mm-hmm. And it's 360 degrees around us. So it's the shape of a sphere. And beyond that are other spheres of consciousness that are vibrating at higher rates. And within that, those levels of consciousness, it has its own 
Each one has its own characteristics, its own physics. All right. And so we can open up and expand our consciousness to be able to perceive in those higher dimensions. Okay. And the more that you do that, the more time you spend in those higher dimensions, those frequencies do start to inform your physical. And so eventually they do cause, they cause you to have more light in your body, Mm -hmm. higher frequencies, which can cause detox. (laughs) So it's another reason, you know, the more time you spend in the high frequencies, the the lower ones have to leave somehow. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Now, we mentioned earlier that like the effect of the conditioning that we may have, and if that's not in true alignment with our authentic self, then we can be trapping a lot of that emotion and those experiences within and not able to express them. So when we're doing that, that's what's causing disease within our body, isn't it? Because when you do what you do, what you're doing is actually releasing a lot of that frequency, that lower level frequency energy, aren't you? Exactly. It's, yeah, the slower the frequencies, there's a frequency for health, you know, that's it's a healthy body. And I even know the frequencies of a healthy liver and a healthy blood cell. And all of that stuff is already known. It's in databases. And yeah, if you're vibrating at, at a lower than what is healthy, then that's when the cells start to malfunction and mm. disease happens. Yes, I know. Because I had a several chronic illnesses from my early 20s, and I had uh, like severe Crohn's. And actually, when I did all this energy healing, of course, I didn't have the symptoms of Crohn's anymore. And I'd done a lot of work prior to that, but that really deeply shifted a lot of that energy. And when I went back to a specialist, they said, oh, no, that'll be the Crohn's. And I said, I don't have that anymore. They did not believe me. They said, once you have it, you always have it. And I was going, I don't think so. But it wasn't until they actually did the tests and could see themselves that they realized, okay, they were dealing with something different then. So that's interesting. This is how effective this stuff is. And yours sounds like a hundred times more powerful than what I've been doing for myself. So, wow, can you just imagine in six weeks your whole entire life changing from one of being in that constant state of drama or stresses to go into one of peace, love, joy, acceptance. Mm. <gasps> Gosh, <laughs> sounds wonderful. Something we should all aim towards. So that's it. So let us now, before I get too involved with going down rabbit holes even, <laughs> for, let's talk about the book that you've just released and what that's all about and how that can help people. Okay, it's called Sacred Union. Ascending to a 5D Paradise. And the first part of the book is my journey, how I, what happened to me, how I went through it. And those years after the Kundalini um, awakening and what adventures I went in that I was guided on. I went throughout the world. I did classes everywhere. And you know, everything had meaning, had new meaning. Um, all the synchronicities, all the guidance to go to Egypt and do these activations and initiations. And so it's all in there. And that's a fun read. And then, and then the second half of the book is a lot of the processes I use, the energy tools that I teach, that I use in healing. So lots of energy tools where I used to be an instructional designer, so I got the instructions (laughs) all written down there. And and everything that's in the book was also, I've made into guided meditations that you could get from my website if you don't want to read the instructions. But you're introduced to everything and you understand how they work, why they work in one instance you might want to use them. Do you have to be receptive to this type of healing for it to work? 
because I think if you're not, then you could still keep those doors pretty firmly closed, couldn't you? I'm well, yeah, you know, it's it's a choice. Mm-hmm. And if you're choosing not to, who's going to make you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I also read that you can, when somebody has done this program, and, and correct me if I get this wrong, but can you ensure that somebody's creation is protected from inner and outer sabotage? So is that part of the process? Well, I, I don't know that you would get that from the book. Okay. You would get that if I do a reality crafting session with you. We do put a protective layer of energy around it. But again, everyone has free choice. And you have to, I give you ways to stay aligned with the frequencies of the new reality. But you could get out of alignment with it by doubting it, basically. Doubt and fear will, will kill your creation. But what I find is things start changing and happening pretty quickly. So you get getting positive feedback. Mm. And all you have to do to get back into alignment is just listen to the recording again and, and you're back in there. Back into So talk yeah. to us about, does your book mention about the emotional spiral? Because I love that. The emotional spiral. When you have the diagram of you start at the base and you've got that varies probably lower frequency, much more heavy, oh, and yeah, then you're spiraling yeah. up into the different frequencies. Yeah. As you're going through the program, you're going to go up the spiral. Mm. And, and so that you're we're letting go of the lower frequencies. Mm. This It's all about frequency. Yeah, it is. <laughs> frequency is the language of energy. It's the language of the universe. Yeah. I, I just posted a meme that says English is not the language of the universe. Frequency is. <laughs> Gosh. So. Yeah. And like you said, everything, every single thing is frequency. So it just makes yep. so much sense to me that we're now moving into this age of actually that is going to be the determinant of how our future years are being lived by how we actually relate to that and integrate into that, isn't it? Yeah. And then we were talking about the different layers or dimensions of consciousness. It's all going to be about your frequency and are you a vibrational match Mm. for a higher dimensional environment. Mm. So that's the incentive to keep raising your vibration because as you do and you can access these higher vibrational environments that are more and more beautiful, more and more fun, more and more graceful, you know, um, yeah, a lot of people are, are looking at what's going on in this world and saying, I don't know if I want to even be here anymore. That's it. That's what I was just going to raise with you, that there is a lot of chaos happening at the moment. And it seems over the top negative. And I'm not just, you know, my thought is that there's a lot of people jumping on different bandwagons because they feel the need to express, but that so they're aligning themselves with whatever they can see out there to do. But really, it's all about the shift that they perhaps are feeling within, isn't it? That, that that need to be redefining themselves. Yeah, that's the, you know, again, it's all about self-identity, which mm. is ego. And if you're pursuing ego gratification in some way, it's not, it's probably mm. not going to, you're never going to get it because there's always something else. But when you connect with who you really are, the divine Mm -hmm. being of love that you are, then you can be strong in that and you can be confident in that and you can be peaceful in that. And no matter what is going on, you can hold a, a center of peace. And for people who are looking for meaning in life and people who are looking for a purpose be a beacon of light and and be a pillar of peace. And that's all it has to come from within you. And that radiates out and helps people. And when we come together, people who are in that space and come together, it magnifies it exponentially. 
And I have some groups of people who've been through all of my transformational courses, and they're just in that place where I just want to serve. What can I do? What can I do to help? And so we come together and we get into that vibe of total peace and love, and then we spread it out throughout the world. And we do see, we see results. Yes. I have a few people in my group that are very clairvoyant. And so we'll do an intention of where we want to focus our love and light on that day based on what's going on and, and then anchor it and then watch how it unfolds. And they can, they watch it unfold and they share it with everybody. And then we see it happening in the news. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. That is so fascinating. And I also heard, I loved what you said about being a beacon of light yourself, because I heard that concept a couple of years ago that you don't actually need to go out chasing people or getting, proving to people, you know, to get them on to the same belief system as you. What you need to be is just fill yourself up with light and higher frequency, and then that will attract others to you to seek out what is it that you are doing that's making me want to know more about you and what you're doing, or I want to be around you. And we all know that there's always people that we are around and we can't always define it, but we just want to be in their presence. And that's because they are just this beautiful soul that's operating at this beautiful frequency. And uh, yeah, I think that's magical. And for me, if that was the purpose of me losing my daughter, well, you know, I haven't really lost her because I'm still in connection with her. Our frequencies are still matching up and she's lifting me higher and higher all the time. And I just feel like so grateful for that every day. But I also love that in that journey, I've also been able to drop away all of those things that I thought were important that are no longer important, like the material things, that quest for money, like I've got to have that good job, earning that good income, to have that good house or that car or stuff. And now I'm the opposite. It's what can I get rid of now? <laughs> like just to live a more simple, more simple, freer, I guess, more centered life. Yeah, it feels yeah. Your values do change, and and you you do let go of a lot of stuff. Yeah, you do in, in a good way. What's like unburdening yourself? Yeah. What haven't we spoken about in this hour that you would really love my listeners to know? I would love them to know that they are beautiful beings of love and light, mm -hmm. and that. They have come here to this planet at this time for a purpose. They're here on purpose. And bringing more of the love and light into their bodies is the highest purpose. And do you have to know your and purpose or will you just be guided that to that? That is your purpose. That is your that purpose. Is your purpose. <laughs> that is your purpose. <laughs> yeah. Now, when people are asking about their purpose, that's what I say. That is your purpose. If you do nothing else, you've fulfilled it. Yes. But some people have an additional mission. Okay. So for me, my mission was to help people go through this transition in the most graceful way possible. Yeah. That's my mission. <clears throat> and your mission is going to be around what you love to do, what you're good at, and what people need. It's just like where those things inter interconnect, that's it. And I love what I do, and it doesn't yeah. feel like work. <laughs> that's exactly it. And well, I had an example recently where I was moving further away from doing what I love, which is exactly this, having these conversations with people like yourself. This just lifts me, fills my heart. I just love it. And I was moving further away from that. So actually I had to be mm, nudged back into this direction again, like this is what you need to be doing. And it was a little bit of a wake-up call. I'm just trusting. And that's the other thing too. 
is that I just trust and I just surrender to this process. I'm just trusting that the more I am in alignment with what I love to be doing, what I need to be doing, then everything else is just going to sort itself out. A good way to put it. Mm. And when it's, it means that you're surrendering mm. to mm. your heart and soul and you're, you're not listening to the ego as much anymore. Mm. Or the ego can actually evolve because it's a sense of identity. And now my sense of identity is different than it used to be. But I also, because I've been through that process, of letting go. And they, you know, they call it the shaman's death. That's who I thought I was. And now I'm not anymore. Now it's easier to go through those, which you go through periodically in this ascension cycle, because yes. you're coming into a new dimension of consciousness. And what your service may be may change in that you've graduated and now you're, you're going to do something new. And so letting, being able to let go of what you were doing before or how you were doing it, which is what happened with me with the emotional mental deprogramming. That was like working great for 20 years and it still does work great, mm -hmm. but it's, there's more that you can do. You can do this quicker. You can do it in a more uh, deep way. I had people that have been through all of my courses. They love what I do and they keep coming yeah. back. And and they took this course, like half of them were those kind of people. The other half were totally new to me. And the ones that had been with me forever just were like blown away at how much more this was. Even though the other was really good, this was, wow, even better. Yeah. So, you know, we've, mm -hmm. we, got, we are ascending yeah. and moving through different layers of consciousness. And it's, it can be exciting. Yeah. And, but you do have to surrender a lot. <laughs> and that's hard to do. That was a biggie for me to do because you want to control it. And often when you're trying to control, you'll be your biggest roadblock. You don't see it right. at the time, but it's only when I step back and then I go, see, look at all these wonderful things that just seem to just happen, that synchronicity, that when you just step back and let it be and focus on what you need to be doing, then it just takes care of itself. I've got some questions to finish off with, and I want to know what is the best thing that has happened to you so far today? Today? Mm -hmm. I think this is the best thing that oh. has happened to me in this conversation with you. Thank you. Uh, oh, I value that. So what is something that uh, you are grateful for? Oh, so much. Mm. I, I love my life. It's great to be me. <laughs> And just when I think it can't get any better, it does. You being you and living in Hawaii, that's a pretty good mix. <laughs> yeah. When you have moments, and I don't know if you do have mo moments, but if you have moments in your day that are not going well or not going as you would like them to, how do you pivot out of those moments? I usually walk away for a while and I actually usually go meditate. Oh, yes. And then come back later and just, it all seems to work out after I do that. Yeah. Yeah. Just pushing reset again, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It, if you get into where you're trying to force something, again, that's the mind, that's the ego. It's got to be this way. Isn't yeah. it? I'm going to let it go. Yeah. And come back and take any, you come back and you take a different view of it or you, or in meditation, you get an inspiration. Or yeah. yeah, that's how I do it. That's great, Susanna. I have. Whoops. Let's just get those headphones back on again. I always do that. I have them slightly back, and then they fall off. <laughs> Susanna, I have to say, what a fascinating and incredible conversation this has been with you today. I've just so enjoyed it. And I've probably gone down rabbit holes. People are going, what the heck? But, you know, I think that when people are ready to hear it, they just, they will listen to it and then they will be open to it. So I just don't ever check myself too much on where the conversation goes because I think it's meant to go that way. And I'd love for people to check out your book and just let us know what it's called again. It's called Sacred Union, Ascending to a 5D Paradise. That's right. So they can get it off your website or can they get that off Amazon? 
It's on Amazon. If you go to my website, I do have you, I do have a page that explains more of it. Uh, but you could go straight to Amazon. Yeah. But go to my website and get the triple flame activation. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because I was just about to mention that. I had that written down because that is so cool. I actually did it myself yesterday. I wanted to give it a go and it was just this beautiful meditation. I loved it. So how can people reach you? I'm going to have all of this in the episode notes. For somebody listening who wants to go search you out right now, how can they reach you? SusannaKennedy.com. Yeah. Nice and easy. There it is. And uh, yeah, I think this has been a wonderful conversation about how we can drop the baggage in our lives that we may have been struggling with. And like uh, Susanna mentioned, go and get yourself access to that triple flame activation meditation that's on her website and align your body ready for the next steps. Who knows where it's going to take you. And I just want to thank you for this beautiful conversation today. You're very welcome, and I enjoyed it a lot, too. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Susanna. All right. Thanks for listening. I hope you got some real value from this episode. If there's a topic you'd like covered, click on the beautiful side of grief at gmail.com link or go into the beautiful side of grief.com website where you can also leave a review. To get notified of new episodes, hit the subscribe button. And if you know of somebody who could benefit from this episode, please share, share, share. And until next time, please be kind to you and take good care.